Sometimes all you need to get a project done is the right motivation. And oftentimes for me, deadlines for games that are coming up and an army that I wanna use are the perfect way to get that done. What's going on guys, it's Richard here from Crash Course Hobbies. I'm back, it's been a long time, and as you can see, the studio still got a long way to go, but I wanted to bring you with me on this journey. So in front of me, I've got a buttload of Tau, and as you can see, it's kind of in various stages of doneness. I got a big trade a couple of weeks back from somebody here locally, and I was so excited, I immediately started airbrushing it and getting it ready. I did film that process of getting the initial like base coats on a lot of this stuff, but at the time, with how finished everything was, I didn't know if I was gonna make a video, but then, Part of me is thinking if I'm gonna try to paint 2,000 points in a few days, I really should make a video of it. So, in front of me you can see all this different stuff I've got. I've got a lot of it just primed black, I've got some of it um, just kind of zenithold, and then I've got a lot of it that's been airbrushed with the base coat colors. So, basically what I'm where I'm at is it's Wednesday, I've got a game on Saturday, actually a couple of games. Me and my buddy are gonna play a bunch of 10th edition and learn the rules and do all that. So I thought, new edition, new army, I've always wanted Tau. So with that, I'm gonna get working and we'll see how much I can get done in a couple of days. As I sat down to this project and began to paint my communist fish Mormons for good, I went into it with the mindset of get it done, blast through it. This isn't fun, this is business. But as I began moving paint around and looking into the eyes of these slick skinned space salmon, I realized that this was just not enjoyable. As someone with limited time, I was doing both myself and these glorious models a disservice. I decided that while YouTube challenges are the hotness and I want those sweet, sweet views to grow my channel, at the end of the day, I'm here to paint my toys to relax and because it makes me happy. And I like to see a product that I'm proud of. So I pivoted. I decided that it was okay to lean into the high quality paint job on these guys. And I decided I was going to put more effort into each single mini than any other full army that I've painted to this day. When I bust these guys out on the table, I want to feel proud. I want people to come up to me at the game store just to take a look at my army and ask questions about it. Not to appeal to my vanity, well, maybe a little bit, but because to me, that's one of my favorite aspects of the hobby. I love it when people want to talk shop, swap tips, ask questions. It's all just part of the experience. So with each step, I decided to put in a little bit of extra work. I was originally going to just use Croxagor scales on the armor and edge highlight, but it felt a little bit flat. So I got a wild hair and decided to try airbrushing little pings of bright green and ivory mixed in to set off the whole scheme. And this changed everything. From there, my inspiration actually came from a set of armor from the original The Surge game that I snapped some pictures of a while back. Now in the game, it was a little bit gaudy, but I really liked how the bright white, green, orange, and pink all really went together. And I thought this could be a really cool scheme for Tau. One of my favorite things about painting Tau is the freedom to randomize some of the panels and give each suit a little bit of uniqueness. I started by picking out a couple of random panels here and there with bright neutral gray, which is just close enough to white without looking too bright. And then from there, I went over one of them with Pro Curl's wonderful orange color, and this really helped pop things out a little bit. However, I quickly realized that leaving the orange just like that didn't look very good. So I decided to glaze in some shadows with transparent brown and some glaze medium, and then mixed a little bit of black in as well. And then from there, glazed up some brighter tones by mixing in some pale yellow again, which really that color be ended up becoming the MVP of this scheme, to be honest. Now, it just wouldn't be Tau without talking about panel lining, which is a big part of why these models took so long. Now sure I could have just washed them but to me I much prefer just manually putting in shadows or black lining because when you use washes you almost always dull down the entire model and a lot of times I feel like you create more work for yourself so I really like to just put them in manually and keep the paint job looking ultra clean. My personal panel liner recipe is three drops of Pro Acryl Transparent Black, a drop of Black Liquitex ink, a drop of the Pro Acryl Coal Black paint, and then one drop of Vallejo Flow Improver. And this worked like a charm. 
Today's video is sponsored by, well, surprisingly nobody actually right now, but if you want to support this channel, there's a couple of ways you could do so. Of course, you can check out the links in the description if you want to get, uh, you know, some of the products that I recommend on Amazon. It'll kick a couple bucks back to me. If you want to pick up some of the best paints on the market, Monument Hobbies Pro Acryl, you can use code CCH10 at checkout to get 10% off your purchase there as well as support this channel a little bit. You've seen me use Pro Acryl in every single one of my videos when it comes to painting models. I've tried basically every paint range out there at this point and Pro Acryl is the one for me. Highly recommend you guys check it out. Great company, great products. But as always, you know, that's totally up to you. Well, let's get back to the video, paint some fish boys. Now, it wouldn't be robots without some metallics, but in my case, I just don't like using metallic paints that much. So for the chassis underneath the armor panels, I used a dark neutral gray. I did, however, use Pro Acryl's light bronze, which is by far my favorite metallic color, and I always end up sneaking it into most of my schemes here or there. Either way, I feel like it just looks really good and complements the green and orange so well. For edge highlighting the armor, I mixed in some of the bright pale green and pale yellow to hit all the surfaces. Really pretty straightforward here. Now, in a lot of cases, the edge highlights on these are actually pretty thick, but with how I'm painting these, they almost look a little bit cartoony, so I don't necessarily mind having those thicker edge highlights to complement the thicker black panel lines that are on there. And then when that was done, I decided to try picking out some glints on the hard corners and edges of the model by using just pure pale yellow. And this is one of the areas that really makes this scheme pop, and I'm so glad I tried it. In fact, I'm probably gonna use this highlighting method on a lot of my models going forward. I love little pops of accent colors, so I finished things off on some of the lenses and glow effects with some pure Doomfire magenta. Now, I think just having a little bit of pink in there really makes these guys come alive. And while these towel may be kind of a slog to paint, when the final steps all come together, for me, that's what really puts the icing on the dopamine cake. And in reflecting on this experience, I think one of the most common pitfalls we hobbyists find ourselves in is the old saying of, my eyes were bigger than my stomach, as piles of shame all over the world can attest to. We get grand ideas in our heads of conversions we want to do or elaborate paint schemes because that's where the fun is for a lot of us. But what these things really boil down to is time. If you want a more elaborate base, add a bunch of time. Decided to do an extra step of highlighting on some of your troops, well now you're probably committed to extrapolating that across the entire army. But I think the golden equation for painting should be time versus enjoyment. Once a step or a model starts to not be fun anymore, it's probably time to wrap it up and move on. However, I think these days there's so much focus on speed painting and getting projects done quickly that I think that there's something to be said for allowing that enjoyment to last as well. If a certain model is more fun or a step enjoyable, there's nothing wrong with spending an extra week or two on a single figure. Now this might sound like common sense, and really it is, but I think painting YouTube videos these days largely program people to believe that they must be fast and efficient, when really what they should be doing is trying to maximize enjoyment. So overall, this video is really a long-winded way of saying I failed my challenge, but I failed it my way because I wanted to enjoy my Tao, and I'm so glad that I didn't let the pressures of YouTube challenges ruin my experience with these great models, and in the end, I wound up with an army that I'm really proud of, and I'll continue to work on as time goes on. This also might be the most elaborate excuse for why I didn't do something on time ever. Oh, past Richard, how naive you were. Sure, I maybe could have gone into this challenge and definitely painted something in the time frame that I wanted to do, but would it have been something that I was happy with? Chances are, probably not. But I still think that this video was a good exercise in showing just how unrealistic some of these YouTube challenge videos can be to the average hobbyist. And I don't want it to set some kind of unrealistic expectation for those of you that watch these videos on your hobby. Now that's not to say I won't attempt something like this again in the future for those sweet, sweet views. I almost certainly will. But for me personally, as somebody who has four kids, a full-time job, and all the responsibilities that come with it, something like this for me, and probably for a lot of you out there, is just not in the cards. I'm playing against a stacked deck here. So being able to try to attempt something like this and tackle a big project, it's not realistic. But we learned way more from our failures than our successes. And while this was still a fun exercise, it really helped me learn and identify 
like what I enjoy about the hobby the most. And when I when it comes to my painting, as much as I like to think I like to speed paint stuff and knock things out quickly, I do tend to get sucked into being a bit of a perfectionist and wanting to be proud of my models when I put them on the table. And that kind of experience can be really valuable too. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching me fail this challenge and if nothing else, got some entertainment out of it, if not learned something along the way. You can subscribe here, of course, like the video if you enjoyed it, and you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Crash Course Hobbies, but I'll have lots more videos like this coming for you in the near future. Stay safe out there, support your local game stores, and I will see you in the next one.